Thank you so much for your time today. I so wish that you could be here in Toronto to talk about this amazing film and your amazing performance. But this is good. This is good. I'm, I appreciate your time. How are you and how have you been during this whole crazy time in our world? I'm good. I'm good. I well, I became a mother right as it hit. So congratulations. Thank you. So I don't really know how much was that and how much was lockdown, to be honest, because I kind of would have been inside anyway. Um, so true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think the only thing is it just add an extra layer of isolation for you know for safety reasons and all of that sort of thing with with kids and vulnerable people so um it's been interesting it's been really interesting and but thank god for technology because i get to see my family over video i get to keep in touch with everybody that way so you know it really is a blessing yeah this yeah. movie oh god well aside from me just loving irish cinema i mean honestly uh my son is actually studying at ucd right now so in third year veterinary medicine so i fell in love with ireland when we got to drop him off there a couple years ago and i can't wait to go back but i digress um it's just such a beautiful beautiful film um but it's so bittersweet because obviously um you know the loss of danica honestly i you two were so wonderful in this film together. The bond that you shared, I honestly thought that you were not just sisters, but best friends and, and the turmoil. Like, tell me about working together and how you guys established that. Because you did know your, each other from before, correct? Well, Kathy brought us together specifically to work together. Um, and that was six years ago now. So she had worked with us separately and just saw a spark in both of us that she thought would be really interesting to kind of get in a room together. And she really wanted to go through this process of creating something from scratch, you know, and creating that with us, which is an absolute dream come true for any collaborator, for any actor. And of course, we both jumped in uh, headfirst and um, it was just such a beautiful, beautiful um, journey together. Um, and so it was over five years from the time that we started doing workshops and a lot of the moments in the film kind of came out of those, you know, little improvisations or moments. And we also did a lot of research. So we would brainstorm and share images and music, just, you know, so many layers that created this world. Um, and then, you know, we had amazing input from funders and producers to, to help kind of really fine tune all of that. Um, and Kathy went away and wrote the script and a, a number of drafts after. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's very hard to put into words, to be quite honest with you. There's so many layers to it, um, personally, professionally. Um, and it's just so lovely to have a film that resonates to show for it all and to show for Nika's work as well. Yeah, she, um, you know, you, you, like I say, the two of you on screen together, it's, it's just, oh God, I can't take my eyes off these, these characters. They're just so wonderful. Um, and, and have you watched the whole film back now? I wanted to know that. Yeah, and, and I wanted to know how you, you felt watching this and then, God, I, my tears were flowing the whole time. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's tough because um, we're so proud of what we got to create together and um, so grateful to be able to share that with the world for, for Nika, for us, for, for how special it all was. But it's, yeah. it's completely impossible to separate the two. Yeah. Um, so it is, it's hard to be objective watching it. Um, and because you have the memory of doing it too, and you have the memory of finding those moments in the workshops. So there's like, you know, your past, present and future almost, uh, the lines get very blurry. So, yeah. um, but it's so lovely that it's so full of an experience um, for people to to take part and to, to be moved by, hopefully. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Your character, Lauren, um, man, you know, it's kind of a roller coaster ride she goes through because she's, yeah. go, you know, she's going through so much turmoil. Here we have, I don't want to give away too much about the, the plot, but your, your mother has passed away, so she's dealing with that. Then her sister's gone and two years. She thinks her sister's gone, like that's it. Then she goes, shows up on the doorstep and she's dealing with these emotions. And then she kind of, sets her husband aside because she feels such a devotion to her to her sister tell me about just developing this character and then was it hard at the end of the day to like every day you know you guys wrapped was it hard to kind of shake her off because wow great great performance great performance um yeah i mean you know i think 
there's moments for all of us in life where you're dealing with so much that you just go tunnel vision and practical and just just get on with it you know and it's not till you have a moment to breathe that you get to deal with all of that yeah. um and that's lauren she's been knotted and tied up for years you know in terms of her mother you know since she was a child and she's held the secret um and now kelly's back she wants to know the truth and to unlock that after so many years is so scary and painful for lauren but the other um the stakes are that she loses her sister if she doesn't. So um, for her to kind of really crack herself open in such a terrifying way, she then goes all in and she's, she's lost in, in the, the flow of it all. And in a beautiful way, she finds her own truth and healing from that. And I think that's, that's universal for everybody who's gone through anything. And it's, it's um, I guess, what was hard was you know you you try and find the moments where those the truth leaks out you know and you try to pinpoint exactly where these things kind of ooze over um and you get to see what's underneath and that's what's hard about playing a, a character like lauren especially in the beginning of the movie because you can't let it all out there you know so that was tricky and then once i kind of got to be able to let loose and be on you know cracked open by kelly and by by all of that experience um it was really fun <laughs> to be honest you know the yeah. dance scene and the letting loose and her being able to just get oh. fierce was was really relieving for me too because it was like oh god i'm free now too you know yeah. i could just be in the moment and and feel the feelings and not have to like bury it under layers of yeah you know, i yeah. wanted to ask about that dance scene was it completely improvised or was it choreographed because oh my god it was amazing <laughs> yeah, I mean, that came from our very first workshop together in London. Yeah, and oh. we we uh, worked with these amazing um, um, dancers, choreographers, and tried to do something a bit more choreographed. But we ended up going back almost to what we had in the in the beginning because it just felt more real and raw and, and natural. Um, so yeah, so that's that's something we found. Oh, it's brilliant. It's just, oh my day. God, it's so good. It just, I, I can't stop thinking about that scene. I mean, there's a lot in this film I can't stop thinking about. Did you um, have the opportunity or did you want to, did you talk to anybody about grief counseling or about how people, what people go through when they're experiencing grief? Uh, for the film? Yeah. Um, yeah, um, we talked to a lot of experts. Uh, we talked to psychologists about, you know, that kind of shared experience that the sisters have. Um, we weren't trying to show an illness so really it was about their relationship but it was helpful to know about these things and how they work so it kind of similar to like a shared psychosis yeah. um and that that happens with people who are very codependent on each other often people who've been through shared trauma at a young age and relied solely on each other mm -hmm. um so that was a really you know those th those pieces really help you with the character and with their relationships to each other um, and we spoke to sisters who, um, you know, where one had gone missing for a number of years and the other, you know, was dealing with the, the thoughts of maybe that she's passed on. Right. Um, you know, so there was a lot of people that really helped us um, understand these things. Um, and I've been through, I, I'd, I've lost someone myself to suicide a number of years ago. Um, and so you, you, um, you work from those places too, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. But uh, like I said, you, you, you were both so wonderful in this movie. Honestly, I just can't say enough about this film. I just loved it. Um, you are no stranger to, to the Toronto International Film Festival, I might add, because years ago, I don't think I had the opportunity to speak to you, unfortunately, but I did talk to Peter Mullen uh, for the Magdalene Sisters. I love that. I will never forget it. That was a a number of years ago. I've been doing this a long time. Funny. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? I know, yeah. honestly, I've been covering TIFF for almost 35 years. And it's like, yikes, I know I only look 25, but you know. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> but Nora, when you, when you think back on that experience, like first big role, I love Peter Mullen. Honestly, I think he's such a brilliant actor, director. What do you, what do you learn from a guy like that that you took forward with you? Oh, wow, so much. Um... I mean, you know, again, uh, I would compare that to Wildfire in the sense of like, it was a unique experience and the way he works is so amazing with actors and so, um, so natural and instinctive. And um, 
I had no idea at the time how rare that was in the industry and how it can how rare that can be so um it really made me treasure when i came back around to to being able to do something like wildfire it really made me appreciate and treasure what kind of a, a rare experience this has been you know um knowing that the last time i did something like it was 20 years ago you know when i first started you know so it really does put things in perspective um, he's a huge talent. He's he's so powerful and raw in his performances and in his films. Um, oh my God, his performance in Tyrannosaur, like, yeah. So I I admire his work so much, and and I began my education of learning what it was to be an actor after that point. You know, I really had no clue. I was a kid, um, and it it took me, I would say, a good almost a decade to really feel like I was starting to master and, and really know who I was and know who, what I wanted to do and be more, you know, discerning about these things and, and just learn about the business and yeah. the, the kind of technique and, and skill side of it all. Um, but he, he is so, such a huge raw talent that um, that's something you, I think you, you end up coming back to. Right. Like you can learn everything you want intellectually and business-wise and all of that, but truly what you're trying to hold on to is that rawness and that openness that you had in the beginning when you were a kid and you didn't have a clue. <laughs> so, ah, yeah. You well, you fake, well, you fake it well. You're, you're so, so good. And then just a few years ago, we saw you in Brooklyn and you worked, you know, with, uh, with, the, with the amazing Sir Ronan, a, a, a great, another great actress from, from Ireland. And, and, and just, just to work on that too must have been, oh, I, I love that film. It's beautiful. And oh my God, John Corley is just such a, a beautiful director and it was so, um, so calm and so lovely and so collaborative and everything on set it just it was such a lovely environment and to be like you say you know in a film with Saoirse Ronan and so, such a huge cast such an amazing cast and um, it was so lovely and it kind of struck me I've been very blessed in my career to work on a lot of ensembles you know Magdalene Sisters you know this Descent of Genre Breakthrough and uh, Brooklyn and then you know so collaborative with Wildfire and that's really what, um, what I love. That's what I get so excited about when I get the opportunity to do it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so lovely to, um, to take stock of that. Yeah. Wonderful. So quickly, I just, you know, what, what's next? I mean, obviously you're a new mom, so that is your priority for sure. <laughs> but do you have anything else that we'll see, you know, post wildfire? Uh, yeah, I've been writing. I mean, uh, while I was pregnant and now with lockdown as well, it you know, gives you time. Um, so I, I've written a TV show and I'm doing that and I've got feature ideas that I'll probably move on to now once that's kind of at the, the finishing stages. And what, uh, part of Wildfire really did um, trigger that in me. I just loved the, the hatching of ideas and the, the finding of a world uh, from scratch that it, it really inspired me to start writing. So I started that three years ago. So yeah, good so stuff. It's kind of a bit of a domino effect. Yeah, look, yeah. I look forward to whatever you're going to bring us. You're so wonderful, and I, I like I say, I can't, uh, I can't praise this film enough. It just really, really moved me, and uh, you're, you're just brilliant in it. You really are, and you, you know, I, I, I'm glad to see that I've been able to watch your career just keep going up and up and up. So what, what a pleasure to have a, a chance to talk to you today, Nora oh, Jane. I really so appreciate much. it, and yeah. uh, hopefully, if I can get back to Ireland, maybe we can share a pint of Guinness or something. Definitely, okay? let me know. Make your way. <laughs> <laughs> I want, oh, I go away. I loved it. I can't, I can't wait to get back on a plane, honestly. <laughs> no, we hear you. Yeah, thank you so much for your time and uh, best you. of luck with your child, too. Thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. much. Bye bye. bye.